Hi everyone, I'm Rinsey and this is Rinsey Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my top books of 2014 or my favorite books of 2014. In case you guys didn't see my other video, I basically just made a list of my top 14 books of the year. Um, so on Tuesday I did books 14 through 8. So if you haven't seen that video, it will be linked down below and also on the end screen so you guys can check that out. And so today I'm going to be talking about books 7 through 1. Like I mentioned in my last video, these are all books that I read in 2014. They don't necessarily have to be published in 2014. So yeah, the first book that I want to talk about at number 7 is The Likeness by Tana French. This is a mystery novel. It is kind of the second book in a series, but it's not really a series. Books by Tana French are basically just books that belong in the same world but you don't necessarily have to read them in chronological order although I am reading them in chronological order. I read In the Woods which is the first book in the series last year in 2013 and I really liked it but it wasn't like mind-blowingly amazing like it was a very very strong mystery novel that's for sure but this one just completely like ate my brain. Like when I was reading this book I could not think about anything else. I don't know if it's just because Cassie is such a strong character and what happens with her in this book is just so intriguing and I had no idea where it was really going to go. This is definitely by far my favorite Tana French book and this solidified Tana French as one of my favorite authors. I have now been recommending this book and this series to so many people after reading this book because I realized now like how much stronger her writing's getting with each book. I also read Faithful Place this year and while I really liked Faithful Place a lot this one is still my favorite out of all her books so far. Next at number six I have I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. This is one of those classics that I have had forever sitting on my shelves and I just never read it. Eventually I just ended up picking this up and it just blew my mind. I had no idea what I was missing out on. I always knew Maya Angelou was like a really well loved and like well revered writer but holy cow I was not prepared for this whatsoever. In case you guys don't know this is a memoir of her life but she just has this way with words. She, It's just so poetic and the phrasing and just the depth of the ideas just I don't even know it just oh it was so good like I've never read anything like this and I'm totally gonna read more of her work and continue on with like the rest of her memoirs I believe she has like six or something that she wrote oh this is so good and so beautiful and so heartbreaking and just has such a poignant look at race relations in America especially during this time period which is like the 1920s or 1930s I'm sorry takes place in like the 1930s and just has such a clear perspective on that time period and what it was like being black in that time period and I totally totally recommend it if you haven't read this book yet read it just read this book read it now. Next up I have Miss Marvel Volume 1 by G. Willow Wilson. I knew I needed to read this comic book because it has a Pakistani teenage girl as the star. I knew that it was getting really great reviews from everyone. Everyone was talking about how groundbreaking this comic book was and things like that but even just having all of that hype in my head I still was just so in love with this book even more than I thought I was going to be. It gets the immigrant American experience for brown people just so on point in a way that I haven't seen since like I read The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. This is just like a nerdy comic book obsessed brown girl, Muslim girl who is all of a sudden given these powers and these abilities. She just doesn't know how to handle it or she handles it about as well as any other teenage girl would handle it. I love the fact that this is just so unapologetic about how earnest and sincere it is. I feel like that this is just the perfect comic book for especially for people who really aren't into comic books or may not be into superhero comic books. Despite what your knowledge is of the Marvel world or of superhero books this is not going to be what you think it's going to be in the best way possible. Now at number four I have Yes Please by Amy Poehler. This is a memoir that I read earlier this year. I read it on the day it came out basically and I read it in like two maybe three days and then I made my video about it where I basically just raved for like the entire 
five to seven minutes, however long that video was. I always liked Amy Poehler. I liked her more and more as she joined like Parks and Rec and started doing more um, philanthropy and just started doing like smart girls at the party and all this stuff. So I always liked her, but I felt like this book was just really inspiring, especially being a woman who does creative things. I feel like it just really spoke to me as a person, which is probably why I liked it so much. But I feel like this book was less a memoir or it was kind of like a memoir mashed up with like a self-help book. I feel like just Amy Poehler is so encouraging and can be so positive. She isn't about bringing down other people in order to help her own career. But yeah, I've been recommending this book to a lot of people. A lot of people read this on audio. I read the physical book, but I feel like this is just a memoir that stands out from all the other celebrity memoirs that are out there. It has a very unique look and a very unique take on the idea of a memoir, and I kind of want Amy Poehler to write a lot more books now. Now I have my top three books of 2014. Going into this, I just want to say these are all five star books for me. These three are the only books that I gave five stars on Goodreads. In case you guys aren't aware, I don't really give out five star ratings very freely. It takes a lot for me to give that away and a lot of times it just has to do with it being like the right book at the right time for me. But yeah, I just wanted to go into it saying that these top three are like my absolute favorites. I highly recommend them for people. So first off, I have The Enchanted by Renee Dunfeld. I read this book on a recommendation from Jenny from Adultish Books. She read this early on in the year and then I ended up reading this and I read this entire thing in basically one sitting. It was during Bout of Books, I believe, and it just completely blew my mind. Like the writing is so beautiful and so powerful. This book takes place in a prison in America and you're following just a bunch of different characters who just have to deal with you know being in a prison or working in a prison. You're also following a prosecutor who works to try to get people off of death row. This book is kind of heartbreaking. There are scenes in here that are kind of hard to swallow. There are points where when I was reading the book I had to put the book down and sort of like take a deep breath or walk around the room and then come back to it because the scenes were a little bit hard to deal with but that didn't make me love the book less if anything it made me love it more for being so real and so raw and so honest. Renee Denfeld herself works as an investigator who works to get people off of death row. I think one of the things I also really liked about this book was the fact that a lot of times the things that happen in here can feel very gray. You're not sure what's true and what's fake. You're not sure all the time what's right and what's wrong. Because of that realness, it just made me just completely fall in love with it. There were so many passages in here that are just so well done that it just made me think so much. I'm gonna be thinking about this one for like years, I have a very strong feeling. Next up I have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This was a book that I was hearing so much hype about, like so many people absolutely adored this book and were just talking about it and recommending it. And so I went into this sort of with hesitance because I was worried slash thinking that I wouldn't really like it as much as everyone else did, but I got completely sucked into this book. I didn't want to put it down whatsoever. It follows this world in a post-pandemic society. This book jumps around in time so you get to see various characters at different points in time. You get to see what their life was like before the pandemic and during the pandemic and after the pandemic. A lot of the characters lives intertwine with each other which is something that a lot of people have sort of commented on as being a flaw like this book is a little bit too neat and everything is a little bit too easy sometimes but I think that it works. It kept me intrigued and I kind of liked the way that she sort of tied all of the threads together. I like the questions that it raises about the things that we love, the things that we hold on to in this day and age, and how removing those things from our worlds or our societies would have an effect. I don't know. Oh man. Like I want to reread this book. I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to reread this book very soon because I've just been like thinking about it since I read it and I feel like this is one of those sort of blanket recommendations like if I know nothing about a person and they ask me for a book recommendation this 
this is one of them. This is sort of one of those Swiss Army knife recommendations. And then finally, I have A Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This book, oh man, I read this for the Reblog Book Club, and I'm so grateful for Rachel, who organizes the Reblog Book Club, for picking this book because I don't know if I would have picked it up quite so soon otherwise. This recently won the National Book Award, which helps solidify how awesome this book is and hopefully now is in more people's hands because of it. This is the first Jack. Jacqueline Woodson book I've ever read but now I want to read everything else that she writes in the future and has written. This is a fictionalized memoir I believe. It's also a book written in verse which is something I was very hesitant about because I don't read a lot of poetry but the way it's written it just flows so well that even if you don't have a lot of experience with poetry you're not going to have a problem reading this book and I feel like the verse structure is utilized so well. Like I feel like verse is something that you could use but not like use it to its fullest extent but I feel like Jacqueline Woodson uses it in a way that makes the stories more powerful than if it had just been written in prose or had been written as a straightforward memoir. This book talks a lot about race relations in the 1960s and 70s which is obviously a crucial portion of the United States history when it comes to race relations and being a young black girl growing up in both the north and the south and her different experiences with that and how the experiences aren't always so different. Oh man, this was just so beautiful and you can see like I tabbed up the book because there are certain poems and certain sections that were just so on point. Oh, it was beautiful. So, so beautiful and I've just been pushing this book onto people like a couple of these other books. This is one where I'm just like, you don't know what you're missing out on because I feel like enough people aren't reading this book. Like I feel like people are sort of put off by this book because it's listed as like middle grade or young adult or people are put off by it because it's written in verse or people are put off by it because it's written by a black person or written about black people. But no, read this book you guys. Just read this book. So yeah, those are my favorite books of 2014. If you've read any of these books, feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys thought of them. Uh, let me know especially if any of these are sort of your favorite books of the year as well. If you're looking for any reviews, in-depth reviews or in-depth discussions about these books, I will leave a link down below for the ones that I've made videos for so you guys can check that out if you want more information. Or if you have any questions about any of these books, feel free to leave that down in the comment section as well. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. Thank you.